In this video, we're going to learn about covalent bonding. So covalent bonds are formed between uh, two nonmetals or a nonmetal and a metalloid. And uh, with covalent bonding, there will be sharing of electrons. Um, so let's just consider two atoms uh, that are far apart from each other. If they're far apart from each other, then they will not have overlapping uh, atomic orbitals and there will be no attraction among them. And that's why we can say that their potential energy is at approximately this zero point here. Um, but notice the separation is very big. As those two move closer together and we have the intranuclear distance decrease, that means the distance between the nuclei, as, it, as that distance decreases, eventually we get to uh, this low point right here where the two nuclei are somewhat close together and there is overall attraction. Anything below this zero line is attraction. Um, the amount of attraction is however deep we are in this well. So when the nuclei are, you know, somewhat close together, there's a bit of attraction. As they get closer and closer together, there's more attraction until we hit this sweet spot right here. If we push the nuclei any closer together, though, that starts to get out of the optimal and eventually leads to repulsion. As you might imagine, as the two atoms get super, super close together, the repulsion between their nuclei really spikes high um, and you get overall net repulsion, according to Coulomb's law. Um, so this sweet spot right here, um, the depth of it is called the bond energy and exactly how far over it is on the x-axis would be the bond length. So I'm going to say that this sweet spot right here, this is our bond length. And the depth of this is going to be the bond energy. Think of it this way. If we, let's see, bond energy. If we were to um, take the electrons that are in this low state and add the bond energy to them, then that would be enough to break the bond. Um, so let's take a look at some bond energies and some bond lengths. We can see that hydrogen, uh, hydrogen is very small. We know that its electrons, uh, its electron is in the 1s um, shell. So first energy level bonded to something else with the first energy level, uh, that bond length is only 75 picometers. But when we get down into two elements that are in the second energy level, like for example, carbon to carbon, then the bond length is much greater, 154 um, picometers. Of course, uh, if it's carbon bonded to say fluorine, fluorine is a bit smaller than carbon because it has more protons. That's why we're down to 135. Um, what is really interesting here is um, if we have like a single double and a triple bond um, to compare C to C, C to C, and C to C, notice how as we get more bonding, uh, the strength of the bond goes up. So a single bond between carbon and carbon is just 347 kilojoules per mole. A triple bond would be 839, but also the bond distance decreases. So we go from 154 picometers when they're only singly bonded to when they're really tightly held together, it's only 120 picometers. And you'll see that trend in other cases like with C to N bonds and um, others. Um, so there's that. Um, also, you might notice some trends. The smaller the atom, um, at least within a group, the smaller the atom, the, um, the stronger the bond. So we have, in this case, we have HF versus HCl versus HBr versus HI. Hydrogen is the same in all of them, but we're going down the halogens. 
uh, notice how the bond length increases because the halogen gets bigger from fluorine to chlorine to bromine to iodine, but also the strength of the bond decreases as you go down the halogens from 565 kilojoules per mole all the way down to 295. So that's something interesting as well. So um, let's go back to our potential energy diagram. And let's just say that this curve is for um, a carbon to carbon single bond. So we know that the depth here um, is going to be, uh, what was it? Carbon, carbon, single bond. The energy is 347 kilojoules per mole. So that's three, whoops, 347 kilojoules per mole. And then the bond length is going to be uh, what was it? 154 picometers. So this is 154 picometers. So if I wanted to draw the potential energy curve for a carbon-carbon double bond, um, the double bond would have its low point um, a little bit further to the left at 100 and what was it? at 120 picometers, and it would be a deeper well at 839 uh, kilojoules per mole. So we would have um, a similar curve, but its low point would be over here. And yeah, so this would be at, say, um, if we were going here, it would be 120 picometers, and what did I say, 839 as our depth? Yeah, our depth would be 839 um, kilojoules per mole. So this would be 839 kilojoules per mole. So just to see another way of looking at it, um, as you take the carbon to carbon in the double bond, and I'll just say C, double bond C, as you take uh, the carbon atoms in a double bond and push them together, that sweet spot where they're at their lowest potential energy state is going to be um, at, when they're closer together, 120 picometers rather than with a single bond, 154. And also the depth is going to be greater, meaning that the bond energy is greater, meaning that it's a stronger bond when you have a double bond versus a single bond. Um, so in the next video, you're going to get into Lewis structures, um, but for now, this is a good background on the theory of um, covalent bonding. Hope this video has been helpful to you, and let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comment section below. Thank you.